So the one thing that happened, uh, which is tied in with the dragon spider, is while I was writing that book, See Me on Spooky Stuff, um, I had this neatest experience. I can find it. I, had, I found it earlier, now I probably ain't going to find it because I'm looking for it. <laughs> um, I used to, I don't know, did any of you write at all? Do you write? Yeah? I had a feeling you did. <laughs> um, you'd probably be able to relate this. Once you start writing, it's, it's time becomes meaningless. I, it would be the same, I guess, if you, if you paint or if you sing or whatever, right? Some creative activity. You lose all track of time. And I would write till the early hours of the morning and then saying, I, I have to go to bed because I have to go to work in a few hours, you know? So it was one night that I was um, writing The Dragon's Firebird. And this is what happened. Okay. You know, when I was talking earlier about um, how our deceased loved ones can find some way to come back and show us that they're okay. So my dad loved birds. He built a bird table by a grapefruit tree in the backyard and high enough that the cats couldn't get to it. His morning ritual was to put out seed and whistle for his feathered friends to come and get it. We saw a great variety while enjoying our own breakfast. When my dad died, I started writing a book as a way to release some of my grief. I would often lose track of time, which would mean I only put out my light in the early hours. A few months had passed when one morning at 4.30 a.m., I decided I needed to stop and go to bed. I was sitting at my desk, which faced the outer wall, and was right under the window. I looked up and sucked in a startled breath and froze. Right in front of me, on the other side of the pane of glass, sat the biggest, most beautiful male woodpecker I had ever seen. His colors were astonishing in their vividness of red, black, and white. If the glass had not been there, I could have literally stretched out my hand and touched him. He was that close. Because he was so large, he sat slightly sideways on the outside window ledge, his body leaning against the glass. He had his hip, head tipped to one side, and with his eyes steadily fixed on me, it seemed he was able to look right into my soul. He was so still, I almost wondered if he was alive. It was eerie, and I was mesmerized. We must have both been staring at each other for about five minutes, when suddenly the craziest notion and thought entered my head. It felt as if he was trying to speak to me. Is that you, Dad? I asked in my mind. With that, as woodpeckers will do, he made a slight skittering movement, and with the minimal amount of fuss, he just flitted off the ledge and vanished instantly into the darkness. Somehow, I knew my dad had used the bird to come and tell me he was still with me. I never before or after that incident saw any woodpeckers in that place again. So it was when I was living in BC at the time, and uh, we've got a lot of birds down there, but this, this guy was huge. He was like his body was about this big, his whole, with his head and everything. So the wooden ledge was about that big, and he was sitting right up, you know, pressed up against the glass. And if I, the glass hadn't been there, and I could have reached out my hand, I could have touched him, he was that close. And he just didn't move. 